As a teacher, what would you say is the biggest challenge that you face in class today? My biggest challenge, I think it is a challenge faced by all post-grad and undergrad teachers in the classroom today. They're facing students born after 1995, the generation Z, so to speak, and they are embedded in this hyper-digital world. The smartphone is a ubiquitous tool in their lives and screens or multiple screens really dominate their life. They have access to information 24-7 facts at the tips of their fingers. However, most of this information that comes to them comes to them in the form of, you know, discrete, small, bite-sized inputs. And they have an enormous difficulty trying to combine them and reach an overarching framework. And so increasingly, that is how I'm seeing my role as a class teacher evolve. My role today is more to provide them these frameworks, these overarching ways of connecting information and thinking through uh, information that they browse. In fact, you know, how to differentiate between information and knowledge. The issue facing today's teachers is far deeper than just access to information 24-7. It is around concentration levels, it is around attention spans, and it is around the ability to reflect, slow down, and ponder. Information that is acquired digitally these days can be broken down, combined, recombined in infinite number of ways. Even reading is embedded in hyperlinks, you know, which can, uh, sh which, re which requires shifting attention spans and tremendous cognitive speeds. And in the classroom, what you need is the ability to hold their attention on a particular topic to retain it and to have class discussions. Now, I've been thinking about this quite a while. Uh, how do you get the attention of students and how do you make, how do you bring forth a lively discussion in class? I've always used very short writing assignments in class and paradoxically I realized my solution to this problem actually lay in the analog world. Uh, before any important discussion is to take place, what I do is I give them a break and I provide them with a sheet of paper with a very, very structured question on it. They have to take their time, they have to uh, slow down, think about their topic and actually put their pen to paper and write it down. And, and then we open up the class for discussion. And now this is not just any random break, but it has to be precisely timed, it has to be pre-planned. And the instructor has to have a structured question in mind when she's providing these sheets. And then we open up the uh, discussion for class and actually the level of uh, class discussion that takes place after that is several notches higher. Why? Because this does two things. Firstly, it forces them to slow down and think on that particular topic and actually write it down. And secondly, since I'm not taking any, any, any grading, I'm not doing any grading, it, 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 uh, there is no competitive pressure on the students. So what you get in the discussion is a pure reflection. I mean, I would really urge instructors to try this method out. And uh, secondly, it also ties in with a very pet peeve of mine, you know, on, on, on having uh, cold calling in class or having points for classroom participation. I, I somehow feel that this is a subtle uh, power play in class between the instructor and the uh, participants and any kind of such power play is actually inimical to, to learning. This should not be seen as any random break but a very precisely timed, pre-planned and a structured one. In fact, I call this my analog shots in a digital world because there are no grades that I have. So the students are doing pure reflection. They are thinking and they are slowing down and they're writing down what they are thinking. And this actually brings forth the class discussion and takes it several notches higher. I would in fact urge instructors to try this out in class. It works excellent both ways for the teacher as well as for the student.